Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look and see how the solar energy from the sun as it comes to us in the, ra in the form of radiation when it reaches the earth, it has an effect on both the air masses around the world, the atmosphere, and the oceans around the world. In what ways? Well, for one, there is a lot of air convection currents. For example, when the sun shines and the land masses begin to get heated up, when air gets heated, it begins to expand because of the lower density, and then the lower density causes it to rise over to, the, to, the, to higher elevations. And then when the air about the oceans is then cooler, that cooler air then moves into its, its place because it then is more dense, taking over the place of the air that just rose to the top. That air then at the top here cools down and begins to then get more dense and starts falling down. And so we begin to get these convection currents in various places, especially around, along the coastal areas of many of the places around the world. Another way in which energy gets transported around is due to the, uh, the action of thunderstorms. As the solar energy comes down and heats up the oceans, the oceans then evaporate. That energy then comes with the evaporated water, then reaches up to higher elevations. It then mixes in with the atmosphere and the, atm and the atmospheric uh, water content. It then builds up these thunderstorms, and as the thunderstorms then release the energy in the form of rain and, and um, the electrical charge build up through lightning. We have around the world on a regular basis at least 2,000 thunderstorms that are continuously deposited and exchanging the energy that we have received from the sun. Another form in which energy gets transported around the world is through the jet streams. Jet streams are something that we didn't realize existed until we started having airplanes that could fly at high enough elevations when they began to realize that there's some very strong winds at very high elevations typically at velocities of 100 to 150 miles per hour that carry large quantities of air masses throughout the world. And those jet streams, they move in various directions because of the atmospheric pressures, they change location. Sometimes they go up higher, closer to the, to the pole region. Sometimes they dip to lower regions. Notice that as jet streams come from the tropical areas and go to the polar regions, they carry warm air causing temporary warm conditions that exist at those locations and then those jet streams will then take the cold air and push it down far below to a lower um, latitude causing very cold conditions to exist especially in the winter time so a lot of huge temperature swings can occur on the earth because of the jet streams driven by the energy from the sun and also in the oceans there's lots of ocean currents that are constantly ongoing a lot of heat being deposited towards the the uh, uh, central areas towards the equ equatorial areas of the earth heating up the oceans that ocean water then expands the expansion of the ocean waters causes the flow into different regions and we begin to see these ocean currents like warm waters coming from the gulf of mexico being carried across the atlantic through the english channel along the scandinavian countries and up into the arctic regions there there's a seaport in russia called murmansk which is way up there in the arctic circle above the Arctic Circle that actually has ice-free water in the wintertime because of the warm currents that come from almost 6,000 miles away by the time it reaches the, the seaport of Murmansk. At the same time, the coastal regions along the United States and the, like the California region and the Baja California here, those waters are relatively cool, therefore cooling the climate along the coastline here. The, co the climate along the coastline of California down into the Baja region is actually relatively cool because of the cold uh, water ocean currents that come from the Gulf of Alaska and on down the coast like that. There's similar, uh, there's similar currents that come down from the northern Canada and Greenland coast down the coast right here and again bringing a lot of cooler temperatures down because of the cold ocean flows in the ocean currents. So you can see that the energy deposit on the Earth is constantly being redistributed from lower locations in the atmosphere up to higher locations where they send the energy back out into space and falling back down. And this continual cycle causes the Earth to have a varied climate, a moderate climate, with a continual exchange of energy, causing, of course, the hydrological cycle, causing the air convection currents, causing the ocean currents, and so forth. So the atmosphere of any planet, including the planet of the Earth, can have an enormous effect of how the surface 
is changed, how the surface is affected, how the climate is affected, the temperature is affected, and of course, again, the Earth is extremely unique in that respect. The Earth has a nice atmosphere around it. It's a stable atmosphere. It receives a lot of energy from the sun and then keeps it a nice common temperature around most of the world because of the way in which the energy is then distributed throughout the world in these various techniques. See, Earth again is a very unique place with very unique features. That's why we like living here.